think you'd said before that being fired in Hollywood is a rite of passage, and it's not, it's not the end of the road. It's actually great. You're part of the club now. Yes. I think, like when we think of ego, so when I wrote my book, Change Your Story, Change Your Life, it was all based on that life moment, on the life, unexpected life moment of my pursuit taking a turn and being in, interrupted mid-process. And I would say that I thought in the choice that I made that led to my contract not being picked up, that I was responding from my spirit. But I recognized through the writing process and the therapeutic process of healing that I wasn't responding from my spirit because my spirit had been depleted because the ego had taken over in the pursuit of being an executive. And so I think that many people who get fired, the ego is the first response. We think, oh my God, you know, what are people going to think? Am I ever going to be able to get a job again? Is everything that I learned going to become obsolete because someone didn't like me or someone chose not to see me? Does it all mean nothing? And, and that is the ego getting caught up in the action of being fired versus recognizing that being fired has the advantage of showing us what didn't work and pushing us into a direction of what could work. And I want to say for writers, being fired is absolutely a rite of passage. Like you are going to have countless situations where your personality may not mesh with the showrunner's personality, where your story skills may not be in alignment with the concept of the show. None of that means that you are a bad person or you are a bad writer. All it means is you weren't a fit for that situation and that there is something better that is going to be more in alignment with your skills and your personality type that is going to serve you in a stronger way. So it's owning it. Like I've, I've had, I have one writer who's a close friend of mine who is at the top of his game and beloved in this town. And he has admitted, I've had him speak at events of mine and I'll never forget one event where he admitted that he had been fired from almost every job he had ever had. And it was so empowering for me to hear him say this, because what it said to me was, I know I have talent because I wouldn't be here if I didn't. And it doesn't mean that I haven't had struggles along the way. And because I have applied the tools and healed from every one of these, I continue to propel myself forward. I see so much of why someone does well at an organization a lot, it's almost always to do with the culture and are you a fit? Yes. It has nothing to do with sometimes the skill set. Yes. I see. It has to do with do the rest of the people like the person? Yes. Are you in, in an alignment with the values there? If someone comes from an environment, a family where success is regarded and the title and doing well and where are you this year is so important, how do they handle that? Let's suppose they, they have to go to a family gathering and they've been fired and they haven't told their family. Yeah. And well, so what's, you're in LA, what are you doing? You know, you're all around the dinner table, it's Thanksgiving, whatever. What, what do you tell that person? Do they tell them? I mean, I guess it's sort of a personal oh, choice. Oh, I always think, I think my, worldview in life is lead with the why. Lead with, and, and what I mean by that is the why explains why we want what we want. And the why often involves the wound in the process. And that's how we engage and we find our audience. So if your parents truly believe that, and many parents doubt it, there are, I work with an endless amount of writers who tell me 
that their parents will give them so much time or their wife will give them so much time to do this pursuit and then it has to so i think it's more difficult for those people with the recognition that there's a ticking time clock to be honest when they go through a fall but i i think i encourage those people to engage because this is what we have to recognize now let's talk about uh obama's speech uh the other night which i personally thought was probably one of the best presidential speeches I've ever heard. And the reason that I connected to it was humility, was the recognition of where he failed. And, and to me, the message that that sends out is the failure should not be what we're looking at. The trying and the attempt to achieve should be what is making us move forward. We should always be taking actions forward. We should always recognize that there are going to be monumental obstacles that are going to get in our way, and we should never let that defeat us. Do you find, though, people that have come from more of a drill sergeant type upbringing I've known certain people. I haven't personally had that pressure, but I've known other people that, I mean, their title and what they do is incredibly important to the family. And if they're not that, they, they almost feel like they can't do anything creative. They've got to have this, like, label. So have you seen that in some of the writing and some of the, the people that you've worked with? And how do you kind of ease up on them? And, and or, or not that it's you doing it, but kind of have them ease up on themselves because they have that little thing in them that's driving them? I would say that the action that a writer can take that does not have familial support or does have people who doubt uh, their pursuit, uh, I would say that the strongest action they can take is bringing that to the page. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Because that is the hero's journey. That is the recognition that there are going to be internal and external obstacles to where we want to go. And our, you know, I think everything that builds character in life and in story is our emotional response to what happens to us. 